This conversation has now stimulated a question I would like to ask Tim White about. So, Tim, if you're in a place where you can unmute. Sure. In the last 24 hours or so, I've been seeing stuff that DeSantis has decided to eliminate all DE&I training from that Disney, uh, whatever they call that, that, uh, that municipality. Did you right. see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, why, I guess I'm wondering why they don't realize that DE and I is not just about things like race and, um, you know, gender identification, all that sort of stuff. So they don't under, because as you've talked to us about DE and I, you really just talked about understanding and appreciating people's differences at any and every level. Mm hmm. Yes. So what are your thoughts about the whole the whole Disney situation? I think because so if I and as you were asking the question to I was thinking about the grid and 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 this question popped in my mind as to where would DeSantis and folks who uh, see this the way he does, where would they plot on the grid? Mm -hmm. And I see them as um, severely in grid. I think they don't know what they don't know about de and i i think that there is a lack of awareness around what that uh concept is all about particularly when you uh add into the conversation uh crt and so there is this lack of awareness around what dei is uh de and i is by definition but also uh by intention and so what has happened with Disney is he's appointed some folks to that governing body of Disney. And right before the call this morning, I was reading online where that body now has made a decision to uh, disband all DE&I efforts at Disney. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And it makes you wonder, are, do they think that it is um, a waste of time and effort because it doesn't apply to them or have any impact? Or is it a waste of money because it doesn't affect the bottom line? Or is this just purely political? So that was rhetorical, by the way. So Linda and I were um, you just doing our normal morning routine. And I get an email from my doctor every single day. And it's always just something to really get you thinking. And this one uh, that he sent out today ends up being about the Dunning-Kruger effect. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to slide this into our discussion for a second. Um, I asked ChatGPT to give us a short definition for Dunning-Kruger. So for those of you who uh, don't know about it or need a refresher, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a psychological phenomenon that describes how some people with limited knowledge or skills in a particular area tend to overestimate their competence. In simple terms, it means that individuals who are less skilled or knowledgeable about something often believe they are much more competent than they actually are. This happens because they lack the expertise to recognize their own deficiencies, leading to an inflated sense of confidence. Conversely, those who are more knowledgeable or skilled in the same area tend to underestimate their abilities because they are aware of the complexity and nuances involved. The Dunning-Kruger effect serves as a reminder that self-awareness and accurate self-assessment are essential for personal growth and improvement. So as I started thinking about the Florida situation and these decisions are being made, tell me if I'm wrong, but none of the people that are making these decisions have any expertise in the subject matter whatsoever. A lot of them don't. It's performative, a lot of them. If I look at the different laws, they pass over 364 laws locally. And even the to get rid of uh, or limit how Black history is taught. So there's one Black female on that board uh, that made that suggestion. And she's a pastor of some sort. And she was talking about how her, from her experience, how um, if, if there was no slavery, she wouldn't know who she is. And so they take things like that and kind of run with it. Yep. <laughs> and and then you put, you know, the performative of the uh, of politicizing that kind of dynamic and, you know, the emotions and all the things that come with it. You can create this whole dynamic. It's, it's just a, 
uh, it's, it's, it's not good because there's some unintended consequences uh, that come with all of these decisions well, that I don't think they take into consideration. Right. And so this is what happens when um, decisions are being made and actions are being taken by people who somehow or another have have earned or been granted authority, but not the wisdom that that authority would really so true. Mm, that's you know? powerful right there. Yes. Now, um, so because we all have to live with whatever they uh, they end up doing. And by the way, they don't know they're idiots. Um, and sadly, the people, according to the Dunning Kruger effect, this back end is something we, we really have to give just as much, if not more, attention to. Apparently, there are a great many people out there who know a great deal about the subject matter, but assume that everyone else knows it because for them it's so obvious they assume the whole world already knows all this stuff and as a result they're underestimating their abilities um uh, not only what i'm saying that not only because they do tend to think about things at a more co complex level but they assume that everyone shares the same knowledge base mm -hmm. so that means the people who could really build the greatest case may not have, um, what do we say? How do you put it, Tim? I mean, you got to, is it that they haven't found their voice? Is it that they're not speaking their truth? What's Well, you know, they, they, um, they unfortunately wind up getting drowned out, you know, but yeah. you know, I, when Brian was making his comment, I thought of this model we use in the work called Intent Impact. Uh, wherein sometimes folks intentions don't strike the impact that they that they desire and 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 I think Brian is absolutely right you know when we begin to look down the road I think it's it's just going to be problematic because what they don't seem to understand is that there are folks who have, who see this differently than they do Mm -hmm. and and when you begin to constrict these organizations the way they're doing uh it has an impact on the people in these organizations and their experiences and so um you know i, I just i remember speaking to an mba class and one of the students asked me did i think that there will come a time when we would no longer need to have the de and i programs and initiatives and this type of conversation and i told him no i don't see that it, i could tell by the look on his face that he was surprised at that response mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you know when you think about it um this isn't new we've okay. been wrestling with this you know forever and uh and i think we will continue because people have different interests in life that's right and, and I so, believe, you know, as, as society evolves, a great many new um, um, expressions of diversity could come forward. Right. You know, so uh, I, I don't know. All I can think of is the kinds of movies that I've watched before. But is it the difference between city dwellers and country dwellers? Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's like there could be any any whole new set of uh, elements um of you know new diversities emerging and but, often you know, it will <laughs> if you think about different demographics they'll see it differently um demographics in their experience so tim when you administer if i may ask the impact uh uh in the the impact intention is it like an audit where people come to understand the the like the effect of decision making they make they're they're doing Yes, because we're able to then talk about people's experiences, mm. um, wherein someone might have, because uh, I am I would imagine if you speak with people like a DeSantis and, and those who subscribe to his philosophy, uh, they don't see anything wrong with their point, with their position, mm -hmm. right? And so when they, when they implement laws and they do things and make decisions like what they're doing, be it on his political end or in corporations, you know, their intentions are probably in their mind good. Right. Mm -hmm. But That's what right. they're missing is the impact that they're having in that environment on the people who share that environment with them. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And the reality that everybody is not having the same experience. Right. So there's that sentence because they mm -hmm. lack the expertise to recognize their own deficiencies leading to an inflated sense of confidence. And that plays itself out at the personal level, at the 
you know, family level, group level, whatever, wherever you want to apply it. And I yeah. think you said it earlier in terms of this idea of wisdom. You might have the skill set, but you don't have the wisdom. You know, I keep track of what's going on there in Florida because I have a home there. My parents are there. And so yeah. when you look at the evolution of DeSantis, it, I don't think he has an identity that's clear. Because like one time he was for vaccines and then he came out against it and then hired uh, uh uh, director of the Department of Health that was against it. But mm. then, you know, what he don't talk about is Florida had an epidemiologist from the University of Maryland actually designed. They have one of the best uh, public health campaigns for creating healthy lifestyles. Mm -hmm. So it went against the very grain of this campaign. Yep. And so <laughs> So you have to kill the messenger. Right. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Again, now let's go a little bit further into my little uh, chat with ChatGPT. You know, what's interesting about ChatGPT, I got to tell you, you have these kinds of conversations with it. Um, it refuses to be anything other than absolutely neutral. So it's a really kind of a mid-gridding kind of an impact. So I said, well, how is this related to a narcissistic personality disorder? It says the Dunning-Kruger effect and narcissistic personality disorder are related, but not the same. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias where individuals with limited abilities in a specific domain tend to overestimate their competence in that area, uh, regardless of their overall personality traits. It's more of a cognitive phenomenon related to self-perception and self-assessment. On the other hand, a narcissistic personality disorder is a psychological <coughs> characterized by a pattern of grandiosity, a need for admiration, and a lack of empathy for others. People mm -hmm. with NPD have an inflated sense of self-importance and may exaggerate their achievements and abilities across multiple domains, not just in a specific area. They tend to seek constant admiration and have a strong need for validation from others. However, there is a connection between the two in the sense that individuals with narcissistic tendencies might be more prone to exhibit the Dunning-Kruger effect, especially if their grandiose self-image leads them to believe they are highly competent in various areas, even when they lack the necessary skills or knowledge. Wow. Where is that on a change grid? <laughs> well, oh yeah, I can I can map all this to the change grid. In their my in the mind of the person that's exhibiting the effect or experiencing the disorder, they're very much outgrid. Mm. But uh, not danger zone outgrid. Oh, oh no, we're, we're we're about to talk about a situation uh, that you you tell me uh, what the yeah. danger zone things might be. But narcissism lives outgrid for sure, and the Dunning Kruger effects um, aspects of believing that you that you have more ability than you have and therefore can handle challenges that can't be that's falling in the same general area mm -hmm. so that's why i asked chat gpt i knew that narcissism lived here i didn't know where dunning kruger tended to live and so um so that's why i was asking these questions but i think we're out, we're out here on the change grid and so I said, all right, what I really wanted to talk about today was the, was the elephant in the room, and that's that Trump is being indicted for the third time today. And I was just going to then stop everybody and say, now, the moment you heard the subject, your level of tension changed. Did you end up going upgrid, downgrid, outgrid, ingrid, midgrid? Where, did, where does the subject move you on the change grid? Upgrid. Uh, okay, upgrade. That's fine. Really? Where, yeah. where is the sentiment that I'm not surprised? Is that downgrade? Uh, that would be more downgrade, sure, because the, the people that are the downgrade danger zone or are they anywhere downgrade love being able to say, I told you so. I was thinking <laughs> what took so long. Yeah. <laughs> and when's, and when, when's George going to uh, put down the full house? <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And so, yeah. And why know, are people still sending this idiot money? Yeah, well, okay. So, and who the fuck thinks that he is? I'm sorry. There you go. So, who the hell thinks that he, that that guy is worthy of leading any 
country in the world. Yeah, so obviously Shags has a rather strong feeling about this whole subject matter. So he's- <laughs> Tell us what you really think, I mean, Politics, poly from the Greek word for many and ticks, which are blood-sucking vermin. You don't get any worse <laughs> than this guy. There you go, there you go. QED. Obviously, <laughs> obviously an upgrade response. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was saying Sorry, so. didn't mean to <laughs> blaspheme. Oh, no, thank you. For, thank you for the demonstration. It was Edit very that out. valuable <laughs> in many ways, in many ways. All right, so point is, everyone's going to have a reaction to it. Well, my goal in teaching, you know, tension management of the Oracle of the Self is for people to feel nothing about the situation to get down here inside of the green circle where you can say, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have my visceral reaction, whatever it happens to be. Um, and, uh, and it's, you know, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it some time. The bottom line is I got to live down here. So how can I be in a world with chaos and confusion and craziness and everything going on all around me and still find my own peace and quiet, little peaceful, simple little world. So ultimately that's our goal is to be there because once we get here, we can look at that situation and say, what? So I was going to, uh, to just show you how the conversation went and then I'll tell you about a couple of other things that I, I did uh, with it. So I said, does Donald Trump show evidence of a narcissistic personality disorder? And then chat GPT becomes the ultimate diplomatic uh, person. It goes on and on saying like, this only has to is approach such discussions with caution, diagnosing some without proper evaluation, blah, blah, blah contribute to misconceptions about mental health, blah, blah, blah. So it's being very diplomatic. And I said, well, that was all very diplomatic, but it didn't answer the question. Does Donald Trump's behavior from your research provide any supportive, supportive evidence that he's a narcissist? And so it starts to point out several things uh, that are that are true about about him. And so I said, so what is more accurate? Because uh, they were saying, like, you, know, you got to do all these tests. You can't just do it from observation. Well, I was trained that observation is our greatest, uh, you know, a long established pattern is our greatest insight uh, into someone's behavior. So what is more accurate, a diagnostic tool for assessing mental states than deep observation over a long period of time? And it goes in and now it gives me seven other things I could do. <laughs> All right. But bottom line, I came down to here and I thought, all right, I'm going to give up uh, this this uh, piece of software is never going to do any kind of a diagnosis. So I thought, let's come at it from the other side of things and then tell me whatever it is that is uh, that's going on. Um, so what do individuals with a narcissistic personality disorder do in order to protect themselves and their self-image? That was my little query. So. It says they engage in various business uh, or behaviors and strategies to protect their grandiosity and superiority. Here are some com common ways. Grandiosity and bragging. And um, uh, now, by the way, this isn't just about Trump. I personally, I believe yeah. that anyone who scores high on a narcissism scale has no business being in office. If we administered these psychological tests before anyone could even run for office, we might have a, a far more, um, I want to say, reasonable um, right. experience with government. So, uh, so I would say entitlement. Individuals, oh, how about grandiosity and bragging. People with NPD often exaggerate their achievements, talents, and importance to reinforce their self-image of superiority. Entitlement. They feel entitled to special treatment and privileges, believing that they deserve more than others due to their perceived exceptional qualities. A lack of empathy. To protect their self-image, they may display a lack of empathy towards others, dismissing their feelings or needs as unimportant. Avoidance of criticism, those with NPD may become defensive and react negatively when faced with criticism or feedback that challenges their self-image. Idealization and devaluation, they might engage in a pattern of idealizing others, putting them up on a pedestal, initially, and then devaluing them later if they feel threatened or perceive them as less valuable. Hmm. Projection, wow. what's that? that? It sounds like Congress. <laughs> well, I'm saying it sounds like a great many <laughs> politicians. Um, 
but uh, we we're going to be talking about tension management in a second. But you know, I can go through the rest of these. But the only only other thing I know it's the top of the hour I wanted to to show you is that I've been collecting memes. Um, and one of the things that I noticed uh, after the indictment was announced was that um, I started hearing a great, great, great many people say that everything that Trump is accused of doing is covered under the First Amendment. He has the right to say whatever it is he wants to say. He even has the right to, to lie. And they seem to be focusing on this. Anyone who has read the indictment knows that at the top of page two, it clearly says that every individual has the right to speak freely. They can say anything they want to say in public. They can do whatever it is, and that this indictment has nothing to do. I mean, the indictment itself says that's not even what's happening here. Here's 21 things or whatever it was that doesn't do that. So I was just going to bring these forward so we could say, as a tension management device, how does getting people to focus on something that in actuality isn't even true um, serve them well in whatever their desired outcome happens to be? They, I mean, that's why uh, I'm looking at number seven, control and manipulation, and that's mm. that's what's being practiced. That's what's being practiced. Yep, 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 yep. And this is the one I'm going to I'm going to make a prediction for all of you guys, and uh, we'll see if I'm right. But isolating themselves to avoid potential criticism or rejection, they may distance themselves from people who challenge their self image and prefer to associate with those who provide constant admirations. They also avoid vulnerability. Individuals with NPD avoid situations that might make them feel vulnerable or expose their weaknesses. Now, you just put those two together, and I'm going to predict that as the heat gets hotter and hotter, I believe Donald Trump is going to find a way to leave the country so that he can end up being the martyr from afar. Um, uh, you know, align himself somehow or another with many of these uh, nations with whom we don't have uh, extradition agreements and basically be that deposed leader uh, kind of kind of thing. That to me would not go against the uh, image he's put forth. Yeah. And does it contribute to <laughs> suicidal tendency? What's that now? Sorry. And does it lead to suicide? Oh, oh. yeah, no. No, 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 no. They probably want to keep it going. Yeah, that, I think that yeah. once you're a deposed leader, you want to be a deposed leader for the rest of your life and you want it to be a long life because what you're getting is a uh, reinforcement that the, all these people believe you are right and they're still fighting for you. They're still arguing that the, you know, you can't, he couldn't get a fair trial. He had no choice but to leave. Um, right. Where meanwhile, I don't know if this meme is accurate or not, but let me see if I can slide it in here just a second. I've got so many things on my desktop. Um, I don't know if all this is true, but it's a meme I found. And it might be about the documents case, but a federal judge, judge appointed by Trump issued a search warrant at the request of the director of the FBI, who was appointed by Trump, it was executed by a DOJ attorney appointed by Trump who charged him with violating a law that was passed by Trump. There's not a single witness involved who's a Democrat. They're all handpicked by Trump, his lawyers, his employees, their communications, their photos, everything. Meanwhile, they're saying, what a Democratic witch hunt. Yeah, that's just people wanting to believe what they want to believe. What's interesting is those... Uh, tenants that you read they are associated to, I forget the professor's name from NYU who studies uh, social ills and how they happen you know whether it's a cult or those kinds of things and a key part of that is this idea of dehumanizing um, and these characteristics that lead to dehumanizing so you start to create separate kind of communities and that's what this all sounds like to me that's really interesting. I'd be curious to look uh, to look at that more deeply to actually maybe do a talk about common social ills. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah I'll look up his name. I forget his name. It's, it's not at the top of my head right now. But I remember in his work, he talks about those two key points and 
you have to dehumanize someone and you separate them from community. And that leads to this de-identification process. Mm -hmm. So you start mm -hmm. to strip them of the identity. Then they'll buy into anything to just get that. So, you know, culture is one of the strongest identifiers of the human experience. That's why even you know, when people come to the U.S., they still want to hold on to the identity. They have a hyphen. Right in between their 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 uh, how they right. choose to identify themselves. So exactly right. Yep, yep, yep. And we see this in these parties, you know, because for someone to say like this is democratic witch hunt, and then you have you know some of the FBI people who were of your party, and some you know uh, the judges and that kind of thing. You can't. It's right. too easy to project outwardly to project and protect your own narrative. That's you correct. Know? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Well, and, you know, but you are hearing all these pushbacks, like, how come they aren't going after Hillary? Well, right. One of the things that I, I try to point out as diplomatically as I can is that Hillary happened before Trump became president, and part of his whole campaign chanting was lock her up, lock her up. He was in, in the position for four years and had all kinds of strength in terms of cabinet and Senate and House of Representatives and even Supreme Court. Why didn't they go after Hillary? So, I mean, you had you had a really big chance. So I don't know. And that's not to, to say in any way that she's innocent, but for whatever reason, uh, people haven't chosen to pursue her. I would like to think that it's more based on evidence, uh, or lack of evidence, why they chose not to pursue than right. anything else. But, you know, you right. get the idea, you just go like, wait, 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 wait. So, yeah, yeah. anyway, it doesn't really, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll talk more about it. I, I'm very interested in having a discussion about these specific situations where we can just examine things from a tension management perspective, kind of set aside what our personal feelings maybe one way or another, and just kind of go, hmm, from attention management perspective, this is what's really going on. And then how does that awareness of how attention management is unfolding actually affect your thoughts, your beliefs about a particular situation? We really need to uh, add to that in terms of the exploration of how do you get yourself to the center and people to the center that have right. strong ideas. I, I'll be the first to admit I'm definitely a work in progress. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, yep. You know, yep. I even had a conversation recently with my mom and she's like, yeah, you came into this world fighting, you know, as a preemie baby and spent three, four weeks in an incubator. She's like, you always had strong opinions that you were never afraid to express. You know, me like in first grade, she had to come to the school and have a conversation with me because the teacher told me to get in a corner. And I told her, no, um, no you get in a corner. <laughs> so, All right. so, so I have a long history, in other words, with just like expressing my opinion and it might not be the most opportune time to do so. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I started That's to put things in practice to, right, to so, kind of so work Brian, with when, that. <laughs> Brian, when I was in school, most of us were in school. Our our report cards would give us a grade for our academic performance, but we'd also have a different grade for citizenship. Yeah. So how how good of a person were we? And so I would predict you scored very high on the academic achievement and you had problems on the citizenship <laughs> side. Yes. And you know when a... Uh, 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 anyone from the West Indies or Africans say, let's go for a walk. You're in a Oh, yeah, you're in trouble. I used, yeah, I used to go for many walks. <laughs> yeah, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Walk with me. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Scariest words in the Caribbean. Walk with me. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's where we'll stop for today. Um, next week, I would like to, again, just do this as an exercise to just say, can we really describe what's going on? And again, because of the change grid is, is predictive, what do we predict based on whatever we come up with in terms of, of the, uh, let me say, the, the, the tension drama uh, as it's unfolding? All right. So with that, there you go. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank we'll you. We'll talk again soon. Take care. Bye for now. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Take care.